So what contributes to crowd violence? Gustave Le Bon, a French polymath, came up with the devastating indictment of what humans are like when they're in crowds. Le Bon suggested that basically, humans can become horrible in crowd situations. When on our own, we're fine, we're cultivated individuals. However, when in crowds, we can really behave badly. This argument revolves around Sigmund Freud's ideas. Freud's big metaphor about life was that we constantly struggle between the id and the superego. The id is completely unconscious and impulsive. It's what we're born with, what every animal is born with. Basically, it compels us to fulfill our basic primitive drives for food, water, power, and sex. It just doesn't care. It just obeys the pleasure principle. If I want to do this, then I'm gonna do it. It's animalistic. Why don't we run around behaving like animals? Well, because we have morals and rules. This is the thin layer of civilization called the superego. According to Freud, we struggle between the id and the superego. Anyway, what happens in crowds is that we become de-individuated. We lose ourselves in the crowd and the superego melts away and our id is left to go rampant. We just run around behaving like animals. We lose that moral compass because the superego is gone. So it is the idea of losing yourself in the crowd and behaving the way that we would not normally behave if we were alone and we're more accountable. It's difficult to design a study to examine this idea exactly because we can't manufacture rights in the lab. However, we don't have to because remember, the mechanism is de-individuation, that sense of not feeling like an individual anymore. We can make people feel de-individuated in a whole range of ways, not just by putting people into crowds. In one experiment, participants were gathered together for a small group discussion in a room. Half the participants were instructed to wear white lab coats that de-individualised them, as everyone looked the same, while the rest remained in their everyday clothes. The researchers found that when wearing lab coats, participants made more negative comments about their parents and used more obscene language than did those wearing their everyday clothes. Other research by Phillips and Bardo in 1970 has shown that when wearing cloaks and hoods, participants gave more electric shocks to strangers. Leon Mann's research in 1981 has also shown that crowds are more likely to bait a potential suicide victim. Shouting at someone who's perched themselves on a 10th floor ledge to jump, especially if it's at night, if the crowd is large, or if the physical distance between the crowd and the victim is large. It seems that when we feel de-individuated and anonymous, we become more aggressive to strangers. However, more recently, studies have shown that the effects of de-individualization depends on the context and situation that we're sensitive to. For example, when people are dressed in cloaks and hoods similar to the Ku Klux Klan outfit, they'll become more aggressive and give more electric shocks to strangers. But if people are dressed in a nurse outfit, they're actually become less aggressive and more helpful. This shouldn't be a surprise. We've seen positive behaviour from large groups of people in other contexts. In 2011, after some massive downpours, an unexpected inland tsunami raced through the city of Toowoomba in Queensland, Australia. All the water eventually ran into the Brisbane River and flooded thousands of houses in Brisbane. This was big news and was broadcast all over Australia and internationally as well. After the floodwaters had receded, People from all areas came together and formed the Mud Army and helped strangers in a massive cleanup. This is an example of when we see crowds operating in a gentle and positive way. People in a crowd and they're de-individuated in many ways, but they're not running around rioting and behaving badly. So it seems that de-individuation doesn't always lead to more aggression. Instead, anonymity and de-individuation seem to assist people to take on whatever role is implied by the situation. And this can lead to both antisocial and pro-social behaviours.